Next, we're going to talk about borrowing models. Now, to this point, we've talked about savings models, and we've looked at how much interest accumulates on certain savings. Here, we're going to look at how much interest accumulates when you take out a loan. And we're going to see that the way interest builds is actually quite similar to the way interest builds for savings models. Actually, for the examples we're going to do, it is the same. So let's look at uh, these two examples. You take out a loan of 5500 on September 1, 2015. Okay, The loan accumulates interest at a rate of 4.29% annually. Interest is billed on a quarterly basis. So when we're doing savings, we said um, interest is compounded quarterly. Um, here, interest is billed on a quarterly basis. How much interest has accumulated by 12-1-2019, and what is the loan worth on 12-1-2009? Maybe I should make these an A and a B. So A, how much interest has accumulated? Well, right here, interest is billed on a quarterly basis. Interest the loan accumulates interest at a rate of that annually. It's not accumulating interest on interest. It's just accumulating interest on the base amount. And we know how to compute interest in that case. From our savings models, interest was what? P R T, where P is the initial amount, the rate is the rate, and T is the time. But um, again, with these, we're going to want to keep our units organized. So right here, interest is billed on a quarterly basis. So let's turn R and T into quarterly numbers. 5,500 is 5,500. Now, this I equals P R T. Um, well, let's just do it. So P5500, R, what's R? 4.29% annually. So we have 0 0.0429. But remember, we want our units to be quarters. And there are four quarters in a year. Wow, that didn't erase nicely. So we have 5,500, 4.29% per year, so that's 4.0429 divided by 4 and a quarter in time. How many quarters? Well, we start September 1, 2015. We go to 12-1-2019, so that's four years and three months. Four years is 48 months. 48 and three more months makes 51 months. Uh, that's, I just did not follow the rules. It's 51 months, yes. That doesn't matter. We want quarterly. So how many months are in a quarter? There are 12 months in a year. There are four quarters in a year, so that makes a quarter every three months. So uh, 51 divided by 3 is 17. And then you multiply these numbers together, and what do you get? You get approximately $1,002.79. That's $1,216. So in um, 51 months, 17 quarters, one or four and a third years, or four and a quarter years, it earned uh, or it accumulated a thousand dollars in interest. And then what's the loan worth? Well, we already found the interest, so we can just do fifty-five hundred plus one thousand two and seventy-nine to make what sixty-five oh two and seventy-nine. Um, if we didn't do that initial computation, you would just use, or you could just use the. I'll just say if we didn't use that, so alternatively, uh, A equals P times, what was it? P times one plus RT, P times one plus RT. Yes. 5,500, one plus uh, the quarterly rate and the time in quarters. Um, with that, um, you could use annual rates as well and turn into years and all that, but 
we have it up here in quarters. So R0490429 over 4, T17. And then you get uh, this number. Or if you did the interest computation separately as we did, you can just add them together. Now let's look at this next one. This next one actually combines um, a borrowing observation with a um, savings observation. You, have, you buy a house with a $100,000 loan to be paid off over 30 years in equal month, monthly installments. Okay, suppose the interest rate is 6% compounded monthly. Part A, how much is the loan worth in 30 years? Well here, again, you could do an interest and then the actual computation. Interest here, notice, it accumulates interest 6% compounded monthly, so we're going to need the uh, compound interest formula, which is what, P, so A equals P times 1 plus R over M to the MT, yeah, those are the letters we used. So here, it would just be, what, 100,000 times 1 plus the rate. Uh, what's the rate here? Remember, since we have R and M, we're going to keep everything annual. Um, 6% annually, compounded monthly, so M is 12, raised to the 12 times time, we want 30, because we want years, 30 years. So this is approximately equal to 600 and 2,257 and 52 cents. A lot of interest there. I mean, 6% compounded monthly over 30 years, that does build up. But you're in this situation, you're buying a house, you notice that you can set up a savings account that earns the same interest. So you can set up a savings account that earns the same interest, meaning 6% annual interest compounded monthly on the savings account. And we're asked here what monthly payment into the savings account, so what monthly deposit, assures that the loan is paid off um, I didn't write at the end of those 30 years, but I should have said it at the end of those 30 years. I didn't have much space there. So you set up an account that earns the same interest. What monthly payment assures the loan is paid off? Well, here we just use our monthly payment formula, which is, oh, I didn't write what letter it was. I think it was A. It might have been P. It equals D times 1 plus R over M to the MT all over R over M. That was from uh, last week's material, the uh, monthly payment. Find a, find a D that satisfies that. Now here, R, M, and T are given from the uh, 30 years, 6% compounded monthly, 6% annual interest. What about A and D? Well, remember what we're doing. We're trying to figure out which monthly payment assures the loan is paid off? And remember, in this formula, D is a monthly payment. So what we want to do is solve that for D, which we did um, when we talked about the, uh, I forget the name of this one. One of them was savings formula, one was payment formula, I think. Um, but we want to solve for D. R, M, and T were given. What is A? Well, in 30 years, we want to pay off all $602,000 of this loan. What monthly payment assures that the loan is paid off? Well, we want a monthly payment that will let this savings account build to $602,257.52. So what we really have is this equation, 602,257.52 equals D times what? 1 plus, what's R? 6% compounded monthly, monthly, 30 years, all over 0 0.06 over 12 again. And we want to solve that for D. So here I would say, I mean, you can find this number over here, and then 602,000 divided by that equals D. Um, and you get what? D is approximately equal to... A $600 monthly payment into this account will guarantee 
with this interest um, will guarantee across 30 years that that account builds to $602,257.52. Um, now, one observation about this one. This does not mean you're necessarily paying $600,000 for the house. Um, this tells you that in this account, it would build to this much if you weren't using it to pay off the house. Um, how much, I guess we didn't define this, but how much, let's just say, out-of-pocket cash would you be spending across this 30 years? Well, let's just write that as a remark. Um, maybe, maybe I'll write it as, I'll put it over here. It should be under there, but there's a little more room here. So I'll note about that example, 599000 or no, $599.55 times, what is this? this, is a monthly payment, so times 12 months a year across 30 years is approximately equal to $215,838. So here, yes, this monthly payment or monthly deposit, let's say, into an account will guarantee that it'll grow across 30 years to the amount that you need to pay off the house. But notice in those 30 years, the out-of-pocket expense is this $215,000. Of course, this doesn't take inflation into account or variable interest rates, um, but this should not be interpreted as you're spending necessarily $600,000 on a house. It could be interpreted that way. It could also be interpreted that way, because uh, what the remaining of uh, 387000 would be interest. Um, so try these examples on borrowing. Um, they should feel about the same as, um, as the savings um, examples we've been doing. And they are quite similar. Um, but one like this, you could actually see how you can combine both of them.